बोधिता नर हरि रूपा जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे प्रभु जय जगदीश हरे Hare Krishna, everybody. Hare Krishna. Um, we're fortunate to have His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinash Narasimha Swami Guru Maharaj on the call today. So Maharaj will be giving a class very, very shortly. We have um, around 26 participants so far. I'm sure many more will be trickling in shortly. And um, so Guru Maharaj has been giving these classes uh, to devotees globally from Switzerland to Malaysia. Uh, on a daily basis, <clears throat> sometimes Guru Maharaj has more than four classes daily, right? So uh, this, <clears throat> these classes are all available on uh, YouTube channel as well as on Facebook. So you can always go back to YouTube and Facebook to watch these classes. So without much ado, I would like to invite Guru Maharaj to give today's class. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Guru Maharaj, you can actually share your screen, yes. Yeah. Okay. Everyone can see? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so. Just as last week we were speaking about 
the importance of association and recognizing a sadhu. So we're going to continue a little while with this today also. It's very important. We should be able to recognize properly who to, asso who to associate with. We need association. Prabhupada said association is 90% of our Krishna consciousness, very dependent. So we have to pick the right association. We have to be able to recognize who are the sadhus. Okay. Understanding the qualities that decorate a sadhu allows one to recognize him and make him an object of one's affection. Yeah, we're going to place our trust in someone. So it's important to put our trust and uh, our affection in the right person. It's very important. Of course, we can all appreciate this. In our dealings, we're very careful who to put our trust in. Because in material life, we have a problem, there's cheaters and cheated. Prabhupada would sometimes say two people, there's the cheaters and the cheated. We don't want to be cheated. Engage constantly in chanting and hearing about me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sadhus do not suffer from material miseries because they are always filled with thoughts of my pastimes and activities. So it may appear like suffering, but sadhus not suffering because they are always thinking of Krishna. So that's one qualification of the sadhu. And he's always thinking of Krishna, so he's always chanting and hearing about Krishna. This way it keeps him, this is a business that keeps himself occupied, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Sadhus always chant and hear about Krishna, thus they transcend material miseries. You can see the example here in this picture, we've shown Maharaj Parikshit approaching Sukadeva Goswami. Now Maharaj Parikshit is certainly in a, a crisis in his life. He's been cursed to die. He has seven days to live. So he's come to take shelter, Sukadeva Goswami. Maharaj Parikshit was a Kshatriya, he was a king, but he's renounced it all and he's come to associate with sadhus because he knows he has to prepare for leaving the body. Very important. Material miseries will come. We have to transcend them and we transcend them by hearing and chanting about Krishna. Do, do, do you see this other? Oh, let me go back there, show this other illustration. Yeah, you can see this is a Maharaj Pariksit. His body was erupting into flames. It's bitten by the snake bird, but he had transcended all the miseries. So what are these miseries? They're different miseries which we all suffer from. Natural disturbances, like we have this virus, we could say it's a natural disturbance in some ways. Of course, man has helped a lot to make these disturbances, but we could say nature of the material world is going, there's going to be disturbance. We have to expect there will be disturbances. You cannot avoid them. We have to learn to tolerate them. Then we have the disturbances of our own body and mind. We have to deal with that. Material body means going to get sick, going to have problems. And mental problems are also very common. And another one, other 
living entities. Yeah, not only people, other kinds of creatures giving us problems. Sadhu is, however, the sadhu, the saintly person, is not disturbed by the miserable conditions because his mind is always filled with Krishna consciousness. We want to find these kind of people who are just simply absorbed in Krishna consciousness. They, don't, they keep themselves always absorbed, hearing and chanting. You want to see that kind of, find these kind of people. Whenever there's time, they have free time, they hear and they chant. They may work in a job, but within their mind they're always remembering Krishna. So we have to keep the mind absorbed and the mind should be absorbed internally at least in Krishna. Externally we may have so many other duties but internally the consciousness of Krishna should be there. So regular sadhana is very important, hearing and chanting. Oh my goodness, see all the people? Looks like Singapore, doesn't it? Ordinary conditioned souls being forgetful of the activities of the Lord are always full of anxiety and material tribulations. Certainly material world is like that. Ordinary conditioned souls, all of us, we, we, we forget about the activities of the Lord. And because we've forgotten Krishna, therefore we're only thinking about the body and the material world and all the problems which are there with the body and with the material world. So many anxieties, so many problems coming. We're feeling like that. So much stress, big problems. All right? Young children come home from school and the teacher gives them the booklet to take home, helping your child cope with stress. Little children suffer from stress, school, the pressure, the demands of the teachers and demands of the parents, very difficult material life. So Kapila Muni advises his mother, Devahuti, that if she wants to be free from material attachment, she should increase her attachment for the sadhus who are completely free from all material attachment. We may wonder, is it actually possible that we can be free from all material attachment? Certainly it's possible. Being freed from all material attachment, one can, one, you should understand, doesn't mean you have to give up everything. Actual renunciation for a devotee means to use everything in the proper manner for the service of Krishna. We want to understand everything belongs to Krishna and it's meant for his service. When we use it in that way, that is actually detachment, which is being described here. So Kapila Muni is telling his mother, become attached to that kind of person who has, who, if he doesn't have any material attachment, then we can learn from them how we can also become free from material attachment. We can reflect the qualities. Lord Kapila continues, O oh my mother, O oh virtuous lady, these are the qualities of great devotees who are free from all attachment. You must seek attachment to such holy men for this counteracts the pernicious effects of material attachment. 
Material attachment is the cause of the greatest bondage. But that same attachment, when it's applied to the devotees, to the holy man, then that's the cause of freedom, liberation. So we want, we want to take advantage. We have to be attached. We're going to find something to be attached to. It's unavoidable. Just to, to give up all kinds of attachment, it's in our nature to be attached. But we have to know how to use that attachment for our advantage. So if we become attached to the devotee, an association of devotees, this will help us to get free from all the problems of life material life. A sadhu is holy because he serves Krishna so faithfully. Right? We want to understand these qualities. Why is the sadhu considered holy? Because he's deeply attached to Krishna and he's very faithful, just like we will, uh, the, the devotee, you can see here, well here in the picture, we see Advaita Acharya and how he's worshipping his Shaligram Shila. So every day people will do their puja like that. They have a Shaligram, they will offer the puja every day, very faithfully. Every day in our Krishna consciousness movement, devotees are expected to chant on their beats. They're expected to do certain things like eat prasadam, not to eat other things. They're expected to take some time to hear and chant. So the holy men, they're, they're very faithful. They, they will do these things without any consideration. Waking early in the morning to do more chanting and to do more service for Krishna. Using everything for Krishna. As the sadhu opens his heart and speaks about Krishna, the taste for Krishna consciousness enters one's ear and makes an impression on one's heart. So this is how association works. If we get association with sadhus, with devotees, they will speak to us about Krishna. And these talks will enter into our ear and hopefully will go to our heart, make some impression on the heart. And in this way, we get taste for Krishna consciousness. We become more convinced about the importance of Krishna consciousness. So it's based on, begins with association and in that association we will hear. We have to hear very carefully. Association transfers the contents of one person's heart into another's heart. Sometimes we sing, there's one song by Naratam Das Thakur and he describes how the devotee has Krishna in his heart. Because the devotee is Krishna conscious, so Krishna is in his heart. And it says also that the devotee is in the heart of Krishna. So by association with the devotee, they will also awaken Krishna consciousness in our heart. Association means generally hearing. We want to hear, we want to inquire also. We have to know how to associate. Generally important to inquire. 
So whatever is in the heart, we want to reveal it to the devotee. The devotee can give what's in his heart into our heart. Heart is like a crystal, naturally becomes coloured by whatever is around it. Again, association. We're going to reflect the qualities of the people we associate with. Just as the, the crystal reflects the colours around it. So we will reflect the mood, the qualities through the association. We say, birds of the feather flock together. You, if we asso associate with meat eaters, generally one after some time you also eat meat. You associate with drunkards, become a drunkard. Association is very powerful. Therefore, we have to be very selective where we associate. If we associate with materialists, okay, we'll become tinged with materialism. Reflection, similar association. We, we, we need association. We just have to be careful how we associate. When we associate with devotees, then that's very special. We have to mix with other people, but we don't need to mix intimately with them. We don't need to get deeply connected with them. The association can be more superficial. Right? You can see <laughs> what goes on in the mind when, when we associate like this, we have to think of all of these things, so many material thoughts going to come in the material association. <laughs> and this poor character, you know, if you associate with him, you know, he's just going to, he's going to ask you to buy him another beer, or he's going to maybe share his beer or drink, whatever he has with you. So association can elevate us and association can also degrade us. We can lose all of our good qualities by bad association. Prabhupada was very concerned about young people in the universities he said, they may be of quite good character before they go to college, but in the college itself, they can lose all their good qualities. Association with sincere devotees turns one into a sincere devotee. You can see the devotees on a morning walk with Srila Prabhupada must be somewhere like New York City or Boston maybe, not sure, looks more like New York. So Prabhupada taking the devotees with them, association, devotees are eager to be near Prabhupada, to hear every word from him, they cherish it, very powerful. Here's more association. Grandfather Bhishma on his bed of arrows, preparing to leave the world. Therefore, association with advanced devotees is essential for those seeking to advance in Krishna consciousness. Just as Grandfather Bhishma associated with, give his association to Maharaj Yudhisthira. Lord Krishna had personally brought Maharaj Yudhisthira there to hear from Grandfather Bhishma. Grandfather Bhishma, of course, is preparing to leave the world. His departure was imminent. He was on this bed of arrows and he was just waiting for the auspicious time to depart from the world. So that all these other devotees, they all came 
particularly Maharaj Yudhisthira, who had, he was in some uh, perplexity because he felt himself to be responsible for the battle of Kurukshetra and not because of the battle of Kurukshetra, Grandfather Bhishma was in this condition and so many others had died. So Maharaj Yudhisthira was very disturbed and Lord Krishna brought him to hear Grandfather Bhishma give his instructions about the nature of this world and how problems and anxiety cannot be avoided. But we have to keep our Krishna consciousness. We have to see Krishna behind everything. So, Grandfather Bhishma is pre pre preparing to depart from the world. He wants to go back to Godhead. How do we go back to Godhead? What do we need to do? If we want to enter into the kingdom of God, we want to get free from this material life, there are qualifications. One is, you have to be free, free from illusion. And what is the illusion? Illusion is thinking, I am the body. And we think, I am the body, this is, then we think this is mine, it belongs to me. This is all illusion. So we have to get over that. Then also, we have to be free of false prestige. False prestige. Wait, let me go back. False prestige. Pride. We, we have this tendency to want to be adored and to get distinction, adoration, just love, puja, pratishta, these things. This, this is all very dangerous for us because it makes us more attached to the material body. So false prestige, we have to become humble. We have to develop the quality, these kind of qualities. And we develop these kind of qualities in the right association. If we have the wrong association, then we get the wrong qualities. If we associate with those who are not devotees, then very difficult to be a devotee. So association, very, very important for us. Get the right association. More qualifications to enter into the spiritual world. We should be able to understand the eternal. We have to know something about the philosophy. We have to read the books. We should understand there's another world beyond this material world. There's the eternal spiritual world, the eternal kingdom of God, the eternal. And within us there is also the eternal soul. We are all souls, but we're in this temporary material body. We should be free from the dualities of happiness and distress. We shouldn't be unnecessarily disturbed by this dualities of life, happiness, distress, pain and pleasure, and cold. We have to develop tolerance, very important, control the mind, get free from these dualities. And we should be done with material lust. Lust, the greatest enemy of man. Lust is the desire to enjoy different objects for our own pleasure. So we have to purify that lust. And in the pure form of lust, there is love. We want to develop love, not lust. Lust is what's causing all of our problems because we want so much to enjoy and satisfy the senses. 
So we have to avoid these things. More qualifications. We should not be bewildered. <laughs> you can see in the photograph, in the, in the slide, how Prahlad Maharaj is in such a very dangerous, life-threatening situation, but he's not bewildered. Sometimes people become very bewildered. I don't know what to do. I'm in this situation. Oh, I'm so bewildered. We should not be bewildered. We should understand everything is arranged by Krishna. We just simply have to surrender to Krishna and go on with our duty. So, we say, we should know how to surrender unto the Supreme Person. How to surrender, how to do that. That's also described in Bhagavad Gita, how to surrender. Use our mind, body, mind and words in the service of Krishna. That is surrender. Accept everything good for devotional service. When we do like that, then you can go to the spiritual world, the Kingdom of God. So. Our consciousness at the present moment is polluted because of association with the three modes of nature. We come in contact with the material world and we associate with goodness, passion and ignorance. So we contact the material energy. We reflect the different qualities of the material energy some goodness, some passion, some ignorance. Just like falling from the, the sky, the rainwater is pure, but as soon as it contacts the ground, it becomes contaminating. So here you can see the living entity entering into the material world, is associating, is coming under the three modes of nature. So how to get free of the modes? We have to seek the association of devotees. Find out the devotees. You may not be able to go to a place like this in the slide. <laughs> Hardwar, Rishikesh. <laughs> no, we don't need to go there. We can find devotees in Singapore or in Kuala Lumpur. There are devotees. We just have to take their association, have association there, hear and chant, discuss topics of Krishna with them, take advantage. In this way we get free of the modes because the modes keep us always material thought, material bondage, quarrel, arguing, fighting, we're greedy, lusty. So many things, that's material association. But devotee association means simply hear and chant and be happy, right? Here you can see devotees, how so many devotees come together, you know, quite crowded, but they're all joyful, happy, dancing, chanting. Prabhupada says, for this reason we have begun the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Right? So everyone can get free from the modes. We didn't come to Krishna Consciousness to get more into the modes, we came to get out of the modes. Sometimes people come and they, they bring the modes, <laughs> they bring, try to bring the modes in, arguing and quarrelling with each other. We just need to chant and dance and hear about Krishna. This is Krishna Consciousness. Temples are for this. You can see all the devotees. Here's another temple. You see so many people all chanting, all happy in the service of Krishna. When we're in these situations, we're happy, we feel peace, we feel the effect. Krishna Consciousness works. It's not that, oh, it's not working for me. If, you, if we follow the process, it works very effectively. Problem is we don't always follow, we don't always do 
what we're supposed to do. Because a, because a devotee is, is free from all contaminated ma material association, he is not affected by the miseries of material existence. This is the effect of the devotee association. Devotee is not affected by the material existence because he has devotee association. He's transcendental, transcendental platform. He's peaceful, he's happy, he's enjoying hearing, chanting, nice association nice spiritual atmosphere. So no, the material miseries are there, material existence, the miseries are there, but devotee is not disturbed by it. It doesn't affect him, it just tolerates. He knows it's all temporary. Prabhupada gives us an example how the devotee is not disturbed. He said, just like sometimes the cat will catch a rat. So when the rat is in the jaws of the cat, then the rat has no hope. You know, he's finished. The cat is going to kill, kill him and eat him maybe. But when the kitten is in the jaws of the cat, now kitten's the, the cat's own child. She takes care of the kitten. Kitten doesn't feel any anxiety being in the jaws of his mother. The rat, he feels great anxiety. He knows death is coming. But the kitten, he doesn't have any anxiety. He's same, same, they're in the same situation, but very different feeling. So the same way devotee in the material world is like the kitten in the jaws of the cat. And the materialistic people, they're like the rats in the jaws of the cat. Those who are devotees in Krishna consciousness do not feel the contamination of material miseries. We're not, we're not disturbed by them. Old age, disease, death, these things come for everyone. For a devotee, de devotee just takes, goes on with his devotional service. You know, he's serving Krishna in one situation, he'll go on and serve Krishna in the next situation. But those who are not devotees in Krishna consciousness, they will feel the misery. They will feel the tension, the anxiety, all the pressure, the disturbance, oh, no peace of mind. You can see they're all holding their heads. Oh, my mind is so disturbed. Oh, I'm so much in anxiety. It's all in the mind. We have to control the mind. Very important, hear and chant with care and attention. And the mind will be very happy, joyful in any situation. Sadhu Sangha, foundational principle in spiritual life. The foundation, you put up a building, you need a good foundation. So the same way our foundation for our Krishna consciousness is this Sadhu Sangha. We have to get the right association so that we can go on in Krishna consciousness we can develop a good uh, Krishna conscious program and we can be confident and have faith in Krishna consciousness. It all comes with the right association. One should therefore give up the association of materialistic people. Seek the association of persons engaged in Krishna consciousness. This is the point. Who is the sadhu? The sadhu is one who is always engaged in Krishna consciousness. He's eager 
to chant and dance and to preach Krishna consciousness, he takes pleasure in telling people about Krishna. This is, this is the kind of association we want to look for. We want to take advantage of that kind of association. By Sadhu's words and instructions, one will be able to cut off his attachment to the material existence. So the Vani, the words of the Sadhu, Sadhu means one who can cut. And he has to cut out that attachment to the material existence. So sometimes the words may be powerful and we may be a little, oh no, just like the person who comes to doctor, if you have some infection, maybe you have some bile or something and you come to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, I'll, I'll just cut it for you. And the patient may say, you may say, oh no, no, please don't cut me. Just give me some other medicine. Give me, or can I just blow co cold air on it? I'll just fan it to make it cool. But the doctor said, no, no, we have to cut it. Have to cut it to let the poison out. But we're afraid. We say, oh no, no, please don't cut me. So the same way, sometimes the sadhu's words and instructions, powerful, they may cut, may be a little painful for us, but we should take it, this is real mercy. This is the real mercy of the sadhu. Because by his strong words, by his instructions, he's cutting through our attachment to the material existence. If we are attached to this material existence, we'll come back again. But the sadhu wants to help us get out, to go to the spiritual world. So you have to be willing to accept his instructions and to tolerate the little pain, the little disturbance which may come through his strong words. This is the mercy of the sadhu. Hmm? The vani, the, the, the body of the spiritual master, that's not eternal, but his instructions, they're eternal. We take shelter of his instructions and in this way we get free from material life. No more birth and death, very important. Understand the goal. We don't want to continue this material existence. We should feel tired, just like Devahuti, she was tired of this material existence. So she was ready to accept these words and to cut off her attachment. Okay, so that's the presentation for today. I went a little faster today. Hare Krishna. Uh, dear devotees, any questions for Maharaj? Hare Krishna Prabhu, Patmarachana uh, Prabhu, Dwarakadishya, can I have? Sure, please. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yep, yep. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my lumber obeisances, all glories to Sri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. My my question, Guru Maharaj, while we are trying to purify the mind and consciousness, we still have some attachment due to our obligation and responsibility. Is it wrong? Will that affect the process? Yes, of course, it's going to affect the process. If you keep your material attachments, you see, this is the problem which we face, that we're so attached, we think, Without me being there, nothing can go on. We think my help is so essential. Therefore, Vedic society, life was divided. There were four ashrams. So in family life, grihastha life, you have to accept the responsibilities. But 
after grihastha life, then there is vanaprastha life. Vanaprastha life means accepting our spiritual responsibilities. And the material responsibilities they are finished with. Because in old age, we're not working. Usually you don't work anymore, you retire, you give up the job, and you sit back and you can simply concentrate on spiritual activities. Because it takes time to develop the detachment. And if, all the, if, we, if we're maintaining that attachment throughout our life, then at the end of life, it's very difficult to give up the attachment. It's going to take some time to detach ourselves from the material circumstances. Therefore, retirement is compulsory. And that retirement mean, doesn't mean you give up everything, but we give up m the material aspect. We stop trying to manage the affairs of the family. The family are all grown up. They take care of themselves. And the grandchildren, that's not your job. The parents are supposed to look after the children. It's not the grandparents to look after the children. And the parents should be looking, taking care of the children. And the, the, the grandparents, they have to prepare for leaving the world. We have to get ready to depart. Therefore, we concentrate, we put more importance on spiritual practice regularly, hearing and chanting. We should be in the temple, we should go to the holy places, we should sp put much more emphasis on spiritual practice. Often we, we leave it too late, the end of life, oh, how to get detached. We, we've not made the proper arrangement. But Vedic system, Vedic system was that by the age of 50, one is about 50 or so, one is meant to minimize, meant to give up the material duties and concentrate on the spiritual aspect of life. Worshipping the deity, reading the shastras, and going to hear from devotees and associate with devotees. If we just so, if our focus is always around the family, you don't have to give up the family, you don't have to leave them, but we do have to concentrate more on the spiritual aspects of life. Chanting. It's important. It's much easier to go to the temple. You, know, you can do it at home. You can do it at home, but not so easy. Much easier if you go to a temple and do it. You go at home, you sit at home, and then so many, you get involved in all the other material things. Problems, they will come to you, material, this problem, that problem. Very hard to minimize our affection and attachment for the material things. So it's important to get the association of devotees. And Prabhupada said for this reason, that's why he had built Vrindavan and Mayapur, these kind of temples, that devotees could go there and associate with other devotees and they can prepare for giving up the body to go back to Godhead. Because we know we have to leave the body, we have to give up this body one day, we have to prepare for that. So it takes some, take some time. Because we've spent so many years being attached to the family and to that material situation. They have, we have to become detached. It's going to take time. So that the Vedic instruction is there in the scriptures, you know, we're just following, just telling you what the scriptures say. It's actually, it's a pancha sword vam vanam brajit. From the age of 50, one should go and live in the forest. Now, of course, today you cannot live in the forest, but you can, you can live 
in the Krishna conscious society. So we want to try to absorb more in these kind of activities in the Krishna conscious society and minimize, get away from all the business and all trying to make money and so on. Just, you know, we, sh we should have, ideally one should have a pension, you should have some kind of income every month, just enough to maintain yourself. If you don't, then it doesn't matter, we don't care, still Krishna consciousness can give you some service to do. But you know, we need to be engaged in service for Krishna. And that should be a daily thing, not just once a week. Once a week I go to temple. It's not enough. You want to be there every day, especially in, uh, as we get older. You want to really be focused, focusing more or fully on Krishna conscious activities. It's for our ultimate welfare. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other question, Prabhu? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, we have a second question from Deepa Mataji. Deepa Mataji, would you like to unmute yourself? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, my question is how to teach our kids uh, about the right association? As we like, you know, uh, today's lesson, and even when we started the lesson on on 4th June, uh, we spoke, I mean, Guru Maharaj spoke about the right association. So we, uh, I'm attending the class and I know uh, right association is important. How can I teach my son who's like seven or eight years old and even my nephews who are teenagers, how to teach them the importance of right association, Guru Maharaj? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madhuji, for your question. Uh, uh, I think the best way to teach young people like this is by your own example. It's much nicer if they see this example coming from the elders themselves, then it will have a much, it will create a, a deeper impression on them. If you can regularly give them the opportunity to come to the temple and to meet the different devotees there and take part in the activities then that's the best way. But they need to see it, the example from you and from the elders. And if they see the elders are doing like that, then they will understand that this is what I should also be doing. You know, children like to follow. Generally they do. So we say example speaks louder than words. If you simply sit at home and tell your children you should get right, you should do this, you shouldn't do that, but if you're, if you're not doing it, then it won't have the same effect. You know, like teachers say, don't smoke, but the teacher smokes. So that kind of teaching is no good. So the example is very important, very powerful. So show the example yourself and it will be inspiring for the children also to see that. Yeah? Okay. Any other Thank question? You. Thank you. Guru Maharaj, um, I have a question. So, you know, myself as, as, and many of the newcomers in this group today, um, because we are all sitting at home, we are listening to virtual lectures, um, association, you know, real physical association is a big challenge because we're not allowed to go to the temple, we're not allowed to meet devotees in person. Um, will, will reading Srila Prabhupada's books be, um, you know, a way of associating with uh, Srila Prabhupada? Will watching virtual lectures like this be a, a way of associating with the devotees, with the sadhu? You know, as they say, uh, make the best out of a bad bargain. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I appreciate your question. We have to understand that present time is a very special situation, that it's not always like this. It's not that all the time we have to just 
a virtual association, but at this particular time it's necessary. There's no other choice. But certain, and certainly you read the books, you get some association there. It's good for us. But still, it doesn't replace, it doesn't, it, it's, it's not equal to the association, the physical association with devotees. So coming together with the devotees. Uh, one devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, what's better Prabhupada that I, I sit myself and I just study the books or I go and associate with a devotee there. And Prabhupada immediately said, you go with the devotee and you hear from them because the devotee, they will pull your ear. <laughs> they will be the one, you know, that physical, that uh, physical presence is very powerful. You know, hearing lecture tapes is okay, it's a, but it's not equal to physical, to actually being there in the temple or being in the physical presence of the devotee when they speak. The physical presence is much more powerful than just simply hearing something or video sometimes, the Zoom classes and so on. I know I, I give some classes to some, some places and some people, you know, I'm giving class and they're at home and they're smoking cigarette and they're drinking coffee and so on at the time and they're listening to the class and so on. So many other things are going on around. And so that's the problem when people are at home, that these things, the atmosphere is not the same. Therefore, very important, you get the association, physical association. And we hope that soon, you know, gradually things are coming back to normal, opening up. So, take advantage. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, we have two more questions. The first question is from Sri Devi Gorangi Mataji from Kuala Lumpur. Mataji, can you unmute yourself, please? Hare Krishna, Sri La Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada. All glories to Sri La Guru Maharaj. And a big thank you to uh, Prabhu for organizing this uh, wonderful session. Uh, Sri La Guru Maharaj, um, when, when, when I speak to my devotee, a devotee friend, she's a wonderful devotee, when I speak to her and I tell her that I want to be detached, I, 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 I'd like to be in the process of being detached. She always reminds me that uh, you have a fa you have a family. You haven't gotten your girls married. I have two daughters and two sons. You haven't gotten your daughters married. How you can say that you will become detached after your retirement? I'm planning to retire a year from now. Put in my application already for an early retirement. Uh, and uh, as I as I've written to Sila Guru Maharaj about that matter several times. So, uh, uh, how do I reconcile this matter, Sri Guru Maharaj? Because my two daughters are not married yet and none of the children um, took up uh, Krishna consciousness. And um, as, as Sri Guru Maharaj knows very well my family situation, I'm the only devotee at home and uh, uh, my husband and the children are not. Uh, please forgive me, I couldn't inspire them enough. <laughs> How to overcome this matter, Srila Guru Maharaj, when my girls are, are being educated, but I haven't gotten look into their marriage matters yet. So when does my responsibility uh, stop? Because I would really very much like to go into the path of uh, Vanaprashta, proper retirement from this material entanglement. Thank you very much, Srila Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Sri Devi Gorangi, for your question. Yeah, we appreciate very much how difficult the situation can be where you're in that situation where the other family members are not devotees. They're not inclined to Krishna consciousness. Very trying situation. So, as far as your, your own responsibility, you see, you have... First, your responsibility is to your own self, first of all. You, you have to save your own self because, you, as you know, we're, we're not young. We're not so young anymore. And health, 
the physical body is giving problems, so many things are there, diseases, virus and you know we have to we have to be careful how much time you can spend worrying about children's marriages. Very difficult thing to do. But Krishna will take care of these things. You know, these these children, they're very capable. You know, if they want to get married, they'll find the person they want to marry. And when they're ready for marriage, then it will happen. But you could spend a lot of time and a lot of trouble, and very hard to please them and find the right person. Marriage is these days very difficult. So I would suggest to you, you, you know, leave them with it. That when they're ready for marriage, you know, they'll do it. They'll, it will happen. But you can't just wait for that. You have to think about your own self. So your own, your own duty is to become Krishna conscious. To, if you're going to retire, okay, your husband has already retired. So why, you, why shouldn't you also retire? So retirement means to utilize your time for for Krishna, for spiritual activities. We don't retire from Krishna consciousness, but you retire from all the material side of life. And so, the children, they have to learn to take care of themselves. They have to grow up. They can't expect you're always going to be there to look after them. You know, they're not children anymore. They're adults. We know they're adults. They know they're adults, but they take advantage. Oh, <laughs> you have to do this for me. You have to do that for me. They can do so many things themselves. So they have to learn to stand on their own feet. It's good for them. And so in the same way, when, when they're ready for marriage, they'll do it. They'll find, if you try to do it, you simply they'll complain, oh no, I don't like this person, no, I'm not him, not her, like this, it's so, so difficult. And if you get offers, if they get offers, then you, you can also consider with them. Sometimes that happens, people come along with offers, they want to marry, arrange a marriage. So you wait and see what Krishna wants. You don't have to worry though. Your duty is to save yourself first. Take advantage, you know, your, take, make the best use of your situation. You have to become Krishna conscious. They don't want, okay, you can't do anything about that. But you want, you want to save, you want to become Krishna conscious. So take. Just do it. Just be become fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Everything else, you know, you're still going to stay at home, you're going to be with your family, you'll see them and so on. You know, women, you're not going to become independent. We don't want women to become independent. You have to be there with your husband and children are there. Okay. but. You have your Krishna consciousness, that's your private affair. And for the children, they'll, if they need your help, they'll come, they'll tell you. So, see what Krishna arranges. Is it all right? Thank you so much, Srila Guru Maharaj. I'm always grateful for Srila Guru Maharaj's advice. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Thank you very much, Prabhu Padma Lochana Prabhu. And thank you. And all glories to all the devotees assembled here today. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji. Thank you very much for the nice question. Uh, Guru Maharaj, Hui uh, Hui Mataji from Singapore has the question for you. Hui Hui Mataji, can you please unmute yourself? Hare 
Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Um, I I have a question for myself. Um, consciously I know that I have a lot of attachments, uh, which may 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 not be good for me. And I like to know like how can I overcome all this attachment to people, to things, to outcome that I have very strong desire of how I want things to be. But I know that they are not so good for me. But I don't know how to overcome them. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Hui Hui, for your nice question. How to overcome material attachments, understanding that some of these things may not be so good for me. So association is really important. You know, I know you're a yoga teacher, isn't it? Yeah, so you have a nice environment, actually. Your, your type of occupation is very much conducive to the mode of goodness. And the, the lifestyle which you should be following as a yoga teacher should also be much more the mode of goodness. So just be careful to, uh, to try to get association with similar people who are really more inclined to the mode of goodness and less inclined towards passion and ignorance. Passion meaning a lot of desires and ambition and a lot of drive and plans for the future. And ignorance is just laziness and madness and uh, unclean activities and so many bad things. So you, you want to be, just try to be selective about association. If you can keep yourself more involved in the mode, more close to the mode of goodness. It means be care, be, have some principles about what you eat, for example. Be, you know, you want to be careful, try to eat prasadam, try to eat pure food, clean food, prepared by devotees and like that. You want to spend some time also to do chanting, that will give you some mental strength to overcome the attachments and the attraction to the material energy. Material energy looks very nice, you know, and sometimes in Singapore, you know, some things are, you know, very beautiful. You go into the plaza and they've got everything so decorated nicely. Everything looks so wonderful. And so we have to understand the temporary nature of the material world. So it's nice to try to always reflect on things based on the scriptures. So if you can understand the philosophy nicely, understand that we're not the material body, that we're simply living in this body, and we're all souls, that's the very basic aspect of Krishna Consciousness. So remembering that you are a soul, you're not this woman's body, but you're just living in this woman's body at this particular time. So make the best use of this particular body. Use it. You're teaching yoga. You meet a lot of other young ladies. So you can also try to impress upon them how to meditate and how to keep healthy, how to be regulated, what is the proper lifestyle. Your working environment is actually very suitable for devotees. And we have many devotees who are yoga teachers. It's a very nice opportunity to show people how to be how to live in this material world without too much attachment. So keep your, keep your own living conditions, keep it basic. Don't accumulate more than necessary. You know, people in Singapore have, you know, they maybe have a, many things, accumulate more and more have lots of clothes, lots of shoes, lots, so many things you could have. Try to keep everything basic. Don't get too much involved. Don't make too many big plans. 
don't be too ambitious, just control the mind and depend on Krishna and see what Krishna wants for you. That's important. Surrendering to Krishna. Okay, Krishna, whatever you want. Krishna may give you work, Krishna may not give you work. Krishna may give you man, Krishna may not give you man. You, but understand, this is Krishna's arrangement. He is taking care of you. According to, you could say according to our past karma and also according to Krishna's desire. We should think, Krishna knows what is good for me. I just have to depend on Him. So taking shelter of Krishna. That means you should chant regularly. Try to do chant. Even sometimes in the yoga class, at the end of the yoga class, you can keep some beads and you can show people, you can chant. You know, many yoga teachers, they do like that. Or they, the, when, they, when they're doing the yoga in the background, they play also some music, mantra meditation. Let people hear the mantras. So this way you can develop detachment. With, with detachment means attachment to Krishna. It's not that we give up all attachment, but we change the attachment. So this is the idea. Just be attached to Krishna, Krishna's teachings. Okay? Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, uh, Hui Hui Mataji is very humble. Actually, you know, she's doing lots of preaching. So all those students who come to her for yoga, they never leave without chanting the Maha Mantra. She's giving them nice prasadam. She's teaching them not only the yogic poses, but also she's teaching them how to chant the Maha Mantra. She brings devotees to do kirtan for her participants, etc. So, a few of the participants have also been attending our Bhagavad Gita classes because of, you know, her persuasion. So, yeah, she's doing a lot, but she's just very humble. Thank you That's so much, Wei Hui. Very nice. Thank you so much for your service. Uh, any other questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself. Yogita Mataji, you are, yeah, you may unmute yourself, Yogita Mataji. Okay, sorry. Sorry, can you please unmute again? Unmute, okay, done it. Thank you, thank you, Prabhu. Gurudev, I want to ask Gurudev, uh, there was a Mataji who was asking me that day that, uh, um, but if Lord Krishna wants, he could even um, suppress, take away the bad karma. So one doesn't have to go through everything so badly. But then I didn't exactly know what to answer her. So I just say that it all depends on Lord Krishna's desire. And we don't know what the Lord's desire is. So better just be good and do good. Chant the Lord's name and read the Lord's books. That's all we can do. Don't keep expectations of being in a good situation and do bad things. It doesn't work for us. I don't know what to say, Gurudev. <laughs> yes, well, certainly it's true. Lord Krishna, if he wants, he can take away all the karma simply by devotional service. Devotional service takes away the karma, just like... Ajamila, he chanted the holy name, so he was freed from his sinful reactions. Mm. So generally it happens like that. If, if one is actually doing some service to Krishna, then the karma can be removed. But we see also sometimes other devotees, they may suffer. Now why do devotees suffer? Like the Pandavas suffered. The Pandavas had to go in exile and their wife and problems and so many problems. Why? Lord Krishna was using them to show how the devotees act, even when they're in difficulty, even in time, difficult times, difficult situation, how the devotees will remain fixed in Krishna consciousness. 
So like that. Yeah, you're right. You, you answered properly. You told her that you know, we don't know what is Krishna's plan. Sometimes Krishna puts us in difficult situations. Sometimes it's good for us to be, if we simply have an easy going life, everything very comfortable, it's not very good for us. We just become attached, we become happy in that situation, we never want to leave it. So sometimes the difficulties which come on us are good for us because they help us to become stronger in Krishna Consciousness. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you very much. Okay. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. He has Prabhu with another with a question. I'm not sure whether it's his daughter who has a question or himself. Prabhuji, please unmute yourself. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, one question is from my daughter. Okay. Janavi. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Tandavat Pranams. Guru Maharaj, um, Prabhupada is a great devotee and his family wasn't a great devotee. I mean, he wasn't, they weren't devotees. But Guru Maharaj said that association can make you become better and your heart will become more purified. So why is Prabhupada's family like not devotees? Well, there, it's not that they're not devotees. They are devotees, but they're just not, they're not like Prabhupada. They're not as serious as Prabhupada, but they're not against devotees. They're favorable, they're very friendly, they like devotees. They are devotees, but they just don't do everything the way Prabhupada did it. Now, you can't expect everyone to be like Prabhupada. But Prabhupada's wife, you know, she was a devotee, but, you know, but not very strict devotee. <laughs> so like that. But she, they were devotees. They were pious, religious people. And Prabhupada's uh, grand, he had, he had one gra granddaughter. She, be she became a devotee and she got initiated by Jaipataka Swami. And she was married and she was living in Mayapur. She was, but she had a, they had the, unfortunately, a few years ago there was a flood there in Mayapur and she lost her body. She drowned in the, in the flood. But she was there, Prabhupada's granddaughter. Hmm. So how does the granddaughter become a devotee? Because the family devotees. Yeah, they're favorable. So you understand now? Is it okay? Yes, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Krishna Guru Maharaj, another question from Pranad. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, Dandavat Pranams. Uh, yesterday I was just reading in the Sri Chaitanya Charitam Vrita contents and it said that uh, while Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was residing in Jagannath Puri, uh, there were great saints like from the heavenly planets, Gandharvas and Kinraras, and even um, Mahajans like Prahlad Maharaj and Bali Maharaj, they all came to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when they left, they were all absorbed in great ecstasy. They, 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 they had love for the divine couple. So, but initially, Prahlad Maharaj, when he still was uh, serving the Lord through Dasyaras and Shantaras, but after seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was, he, he was you know, absorbed in ecstasy for Lord Krishna. So does that, like, change things? Does, does that mean that he becomes, he will attain Goloka Vrindavan instead of Lord Narasimhadev's abode? <laughs> uh, well, the, he, 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 Prahlad Maharaj is devotee of, in some places in Srimad Bhagavatam, we find Prahlad Maharaj praying to Krishna, but in other places he's praying to Vishnu. Lord Vishnu appears as Lord Nishringadev because of the benedictions given by Brahma, the Lord had to come as Lord Nishingade to kill Haranyakashipu. But Prahlad is, you know, sometime, in some places he's Krishna Bhakta, in other places he's talking about Vishnu. 
So Prahlad could certainly go after meeting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, certainly he can go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's place, not just Goloka, he can go to Mayapur. Mayapur is also in the spiritual world, or Navadweep. He can go there and join the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya. Yeah, I mean, Prahlad Maharaj certainly can be, can, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, he could come to Madhurya Ras, possible. It doesn't have to be in Dasha Ras. Guru Maharaj, uh, I have one question also. Um, when we talk about devotee association, uh, it's clear when it's uh, those who are not devotees and those who are devotees, we can make the distinction. But sometimes when we are in a community of devotees uh, or even in a family of devotees, uh, we have all grades, different grades of devotee associations. And sometimes these dis devotee associations can be a cause of pain or can be a cause of uh, some kind of misery, uh, you know, or even you may get angry at them for, for some reasons. Uh, how do we see this in, in perspective? As, I mean, as a person who's trying to improve in our spiritual life, when this kind of, uh, as, I mean, devotee association, but at the same time, we are not taking the, 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 the positive aspect of it. It seems to sometimes drive us in a negative way. How to properly understand this? <laughs> hmm. Devotee association, but the effect is not positive. Well, how to understand this? This is this is our own this is our own mistake. We have to we have to want to avoid these kind of situations. Uh, the devotee association is meant for. Hearing and chanting, it's not meant to be getting angry, <laughs> getting angry at devotees. Of course, sometimes Prabhupada would get angry, a little angry, but anger, his anger would be very short. You know, somebody put some salt in the charanamrita instead of sugar. He'd say, oh, who did this? And then he was get somebody responsible to do it in future. So you have to be very careful. You know, we de definitely don't want to get emotional and angry and these things in a, in the course of our devotional service. We have to control these things. So association with devotees in the yeah. It can be challenging sometimes. Sometimes young children, they may do something you don't like and upset you. We have to be a little detached from these things. At the same time, sometimes you have to be a father, you have to be a parent. At the same time, you have to be a devotee. <laughs> How to adjust? Uh, I, I know Prabhupada's son, Prabhupada's son, told me personally, I was speaking to Prabhupada's son one time, and he told me, he said, you know, our father was very strict with us. <laughs> our father was very strict. So Prabhupada was like that, you know, he was in family life, he was also, he had five children. And so he said, uh, he was very strict. But we have to, the focus has to be on Krishna. We have to always bring ourselves back to a Krishna consciousness that this is, you know, oh Krishna, please save me, protect me. <laughs> we, we get a little caught up with the situation, you become angry or emotional, disturbed. You have to come back to Krishna, oh Krishna, help me. Become detached from all of these things. We should know that this is all temporary situation. These situations with children and so on. Children will grow up. 
and they will go and they will have their own homes and so on, they'll move, you'll be separated. So they're temporary relationships. So you, you have some responsibility, you, you, you take that understand it's, it's, not in etern it's not eternal, the relationship is not eternal. So for some time you're doing this, you have to tolerate. Don't get too disturbed by it. You get disturbed, then go out of the room. Or either you t if, the ch if the children are disturbing you, you can go out of the room, or you can tell the children to go out of the room. Either way. It's just a matter of adjusting the situation. Don't get too much disturbed. We have to understand, this is just our mind which is becoming disturbed. Actually, it's not such a big thing. We have to keep the mind focused on Krishna. Even though challenges are there, difficulties, disturbances are coming, bring the mind back to Krishna. Take shelter of Krishna. So this is Krishna consciousness. Accepting all of these disturbances. These disturbances are very small. They're nothing. The real disturbance is going to come at the end of life when you have to die. You have to give up the material body. And that's a big disturbance. So you have to tolerate these little disturbances. Go on with Krishna consciousness. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Any other questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself. Guru Maharaj, one more question from me. <laughs> Make it the last question. Like what the Mataji was talking earlier, when we go for preaching to outside uh, outsiders, immediately we can uh, bring them into Krishna consciousness. But sometimes we are in the family, practicing Krishna consciousness, we can't even bring our children into Krishna consciousness. Is it due to the karma or due to the process is not correct? There was nothing wrong in the process. Maybe we're not following the process correctly. But, you know, the children, they're not, you say they're not following, they're not becoming devotees, but they may not be immediately becoming devotees. It has to, you have to give them time. They have to see, you have to see, gradually as they grow up, they will think more about it. But the training they get as children, just coming to the temple, the training, then it will be beneficial for them later in life. They will remember. Now Prabhupada used used to take his children to the temple when he was in his family life. Prabhupada would go to the temple, he'd bring the children. So the children grew up, they didn't take an active interest in Krishna consciousness. It's due to association. What kind of association do you take? What kind, how do you get involved with association? And so, association is like that. You associate with materialists, become a materialist. Just like we see uh, the example of Mother Earth, when she was picked up from the bottom of the universe by Lord Varaha, a child from Lord Varaha, and the child was um, Boma. And as Boma, she brought him up, Mother Earth, Bhumi, she brought up Boma to be a good devotee. But later on he got bad association. He associated with demons and he lost all his Krishna consciousness. Could you hear okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he became Narakasura then. Yeah, right. So killed by the Lord. So, yeah. So association, you know, we would still we do our duty, do what we can to try to help them become Krishna conscious. We don't know who will be a devotee. Mm. 
Okay, Guru Murad, a little bit update status in Malaysia. I think uh, they already open up, they call it as a, a restricted movement control order. So we can travel interstate from Penang to Kuala Lumpur and still some kind of uh, control. They are scared that there could be a second wave. So international travel is still, I think, uh, restricted. So these kind of things are moving uh, slowly back to normal. Uh -huh. And that's how it's happening. Okay. So, I don't know about Singapore is okay or not. Interesting. Uh, in, in, in but India is getting bad to us, Guru Maharaj. In China, a lot of unemployment. A lot of unemployment in China. And the China government yeah. China government have told people that if they want they can go and out and they can sit in the street and they can sell their wares in the street publicly. So usually in China that was never allowed. They wouldn't allow people to sit there and do, be like a street vendor. But now they're encouraging it because there's so much unemployment. So the economic situation there in China is like that. So China also... Yeah, yeah. yeah, the other thing, India is getting bad to us. I think more and more infections. Looks like we cannot travel to India for the next one. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a problem over there. You know. Okay, since um, any, since there are no other questions, um, we will we will bring the class to a conclusion. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Rushing for the office meetings. Yeah, people must have to rush to work. Go to work. <laughs> thank you very much. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinash, Narasimha Swami Guru Maharaj ki. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. We missed you, Guru Maharaj. Yes, we miss you so much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj.